Hi guys, I'm gonna try to make the second video for how to heal from uh, toxic relationships. And in the first video, I talked about how if a narcissist cheats on you, lies to you, and gaslights you, it is not your fault. That is, they will try to put it on you, they will blame you, they will say that they cheated, they lied, they gaslighted, they manipulated, they stole from you, they you know, uh, financially abused you. They will say it's all your fault. I call bullshit on that. Uh, a person's, you know, what they do, it's their responsibility. You have your own part that's different than what they did. Did you cheat? No, probably not. Um, you're not responsible for somebody else's infidelity. Um, so, you know, when I was in my early 20s, I was in my alcoholism, I was unfaithful to my uh, first husband in my early 20s. I cheated and I did that because it was a personal choice and it was a really shitty, hurtful, destructive personal choice, but I did do that and I hurt him. Since then, I've tried to make amends for those harms that I caused. Um, you know, when I was in my early 20s, I was very narcissistic and alcoholic and in addiction. So I do understand that people do make these very self-centered decisions in the moment um, because they feel, you know, that probably, you know, with I don't know if it's just with narcissism, but with addiction, people feel very, um, you know, uh, self-loathing um, and they hate themselves. So they do self-destructive things and then they feel um, typically some guilt and remorse. The difference that you'll see with a narcissist is they'll cheat, they'll lie, they'll gaslight, they'll steal, and then they also don't show any guilt or remorse. Uh, they'll continue to financially abuse their um, ex or their ex-spouse in uh, you know, a divorce. So these are the people that cheat, they don't have any remorse, they don't have a guilt, any guilt, and then they go ahead and destroy you financially. That's just how they roll. Neurotypicals, often if they cheat, they feel bad, they feel guilt, they feel remorse, and then they will not also try to destroy that person in every other way. Uh, again, the narcissist thinking, you know, um, their cheating is your fault. That's probably what they actually really think. That's how delusional and distorted their thinking is. It's your fault, everything is your fault, you're the scapegoat, you're to blame, right? So reject that. That is BS. It is not your fault. You have a part, whatever your part is. Usually your part is you probably tolerated bad behaviors. You probably had porous boundaries. You probably didn't love yourself enough to um, you know, set healthy, clean, clear boundaries, right? Um, so that's probably your part. Um, you may have also reacted. Narcissists are very good at getting other people to react while they seem calm, cool, and collected. Being dead inside and having no emotions and having no feelings, that is not being calm, cool, and collected. That's just being dead inside. They have very low affect. You can tell in their face. They're just sort of, you know, um, almost, they almost seem sociopathic in their lack of emotion. So probably if you were with a narcissist or a sociopath, like they don't show much emotion. They don't show much happiness, much sadness, whatever. They're just sort of dead inside. That's not normal. You're normal. If you had a normal reaction to somebody cheating on you, lying to you, gaslighting, emotionally abusing you, manipulating you, being totally self-centered. If you had a normal reaction of anger and sadness and hurt and pain, that's normal. That makes you human. That's part of what makes you human. So I want to shift this around to more ways in which you can heal. First, acknowledge that it happened. Acknowledge that you're really hurt. Okay. That's a fact. You're probably really angry and that's totally normal. Behind all anger is really pain, right? So you're hurt, your feelings are hurt. You were betrayed by someone that you trusted. You probably really, really loved them. You, if you were with a covert narcissist, you probably had no idea that they had a double life and that they were cheating and lying to you. You probably thought that they really loved you. So it's very normal for you to feel horribly betrayed, for you to be very angry, but just recognize that underneath that anger is a deep grief. It's a sadness and grief that you're, you're feeling. And eventually you're going to process through the anger, right? And that takes a while because typically if you're trying to divorce a narcissist, you're going to keep getting re-triggered and re-injured because that's their strategy. They love to feed off other people's emotional reactions. So they just want to keep that going as long as they can. They will drag out divorces because for them it's all about control and power and they want to destroy you even though they're the ones who cheated, lied, gaslighted, and did all that crazy crap, right? 
But so you're probably going to get re-injured. It's really hard to heal when you keep getting re-injured, but I'm going to um, encourage you to do your best to heal anyway, right? And here's some things that you can do to heal. Um, one very, very good book called Whole Again by Jackson McKenzie. Um, if you want to understand narcissists, psychopaths, sociopaths, emotional manipulators, read the first book called Psychopath Free. That's his first book. But then the second book is called Whole Again, and that is where you learn your defense mechanisms, your way of reacting in relationships, and where you learn why you might have been attracted to an emotional manipulator if you tend to have more of the codependent character characteristics. So that's a really good book, Whole Again. Another good book I recommend is Healing from Hidden Abuse by Shannon Thomas. Um, I highly recommend going to um, some therapy and I really think it's important if you can do EMDR therapy. Make sure that you get a really, really good therapist. Um, eye movement, um, desensitization, reprocessing, if I'm correctly remembering it. And it is going to help you retrain your brain. Um, also, cognitive behavioral therapy is very helpful. You, you can start shifting your thinking around because if you're watching these videos, you probably are blaming yourself. You probably think you did something wrong. And even though logically you may know that that's not true, you might have this little tape recorder in your head that's telling you that you did something wrong. You were, you, you know, you made this happen or you're less than perfect. And because you weren't perfect, then you don't deserve to be loved. You don't have to be perfect in order to be loved. I'm here to tell you that it's okay. It's okay not to be perfect. In fact, that's what makes you human. None of us are perfect. The narcissist just can't accept that they're less than perfect. They can't handle it because they have such a fragile ego. You know, it's okay. Accept your brokenness. Accept that we're all a little bit broken. Some of us are doing what we can to recognize the places in us that are broken and to do that, that healing around those broken parts. So EMDR therapy and cognitive behavioral therapy are some very good ways that you can um, learn, that you can start healing from this. If you can't afford to go to a therapist, there's some online um, therapy that's cheap. There's also some YouTube um, videos on CBT, uh, cognitive behavioral therapy. There's some online videos on YouTube for EMDR. These are some things that you can do. And then I highly encourage you to get out there and start exercising, somatic body work. I don't care if you walk, if you go running, if you go swimming, if you go climbing, if you go hiking, if you go surfing, doesn't matter. Get out there and do some exercise, tennis, you know, whatever you love to do, get out there and do it. And you're not gonna feel like doing it in the, first, in the beginning, but do it anyway. Get out there and start using and working with your body. Even if you wake up in the morning and you do just do some stretches or do some yoga. Also, meditation is huge. I really think meditation is, you know, it's the saving grace. You can go onto YouTube and you can find free meditations to overcome narcissistic abuse. You can also find free meditations to overcome complex PTSD and trauma. You are probably gonna have really bad insomnia when you first find this out, especially if you weren't aware that you were with a narcissist and it was very shocking if they were a covert or sociopath and you thought they loved you, you thought you had a normal marriage and you find out that they had a double life and they have no empathy and they are dead inside, all these things that you find out, you may be in a state of shock and trauma. If so, you're probably going to have some really, really bad insomnia. There's some excellent meditations, um, Google, trauma or, or um, insomnia meditation for trauma and PTSD. There's like a 45 minute one on there that is so excellent. When you wake up in the middle of the night with that insomnia, play that meditation and, and try to go back to sleep. Also, you might wanna um, try valerian root or melatonin and then earplugs. Those things have really helped me. So sleep, and I know you're gonna probably, you know, because you have trauma brain, you're gonna have some problems with your sleep. That's very, very normal. It's okay. You're gonna, it's gonna get better. You're gonna get through it. You're gonna start healing. You're gonna start sleeping again like a normal person, right? Or like you did before the trauma. Um, also, record, start writing about your trauma. Start keeping a journal, write, free write. Just write it all out, just free write. Every 
piece of anger that you have against the psychological manipulator, you know, anger at yourself that you have for maybe being duped, for not seeing the truth, for ignoring red flags, or whatever it is that you think that you're, you know, upset with yourself or with them over, right? Write it out, get it out, get it out. Um, another way that is very helpful is start talking about it. Tell your story. Be careful who you tell your story to. You don't want to tell it to somebody who's not safe, but tell it to a therapist, tell it to a sponsor, tell it to a dear friend that you trust. Tell your story and, and don't hide it. You don't need to be having shame. This is not your shame to carry. Do not carry this shame. I know that you may have done things in reaction to being psychologically abused, tortured, gaslighted, and manipulated. Most people in these relationships do those sorts of things. You might have gotten angry, frustrated, sad. Um, that's normal. Um, you might have even acted out, you know, in some ways. Hopefully, you didn't act out in ways that were, you know, very... Um, very bad but hopefully you know it's it's normal that you probably has some reaction that's actually normal it's okay forgive yourself uh, you know even people that are being tortured in prisoner of war camps like at some point like they break so you've been broken down by a narcissist it's normal that you had a reaction that is what part of what makes you human okay so forgive yourself if you acted out inappropriately forgive yourself and start saying to yourself i forgive myself it's okay i made some mistakes i'm a human i'm a little bit broken like we all are i accept my brokenness i'm going to do what i can to heal those broken parts and you've heard me go off and off about this, but I really recommend Codependence Anonymous. Um, I started going when I was in the middle of this, figuring out that I was in, in a, a codependent, a mesh relationship with a narcissist, and I am probably a codependent. That person's probably a narcissist. If you read or Google Ross Rosenberg, you will find that codependents and narcissists find each other. It's a toxic dance. They create codependent, unhealthy relationships. Um, the narcissist is always going to find um, an empath or a codependent or somebody that they can project their garbage onto. A codependent is one that thinks everything's their fault and they tend to take on more responsibility for other people's bad behaviors than is theirs to carry. So it's this perfect toxic dance. Narcissists can't take any responsibility. They blame the codependent for everything and the codependent's like, oh, maybe it's my fault. Maybe everything's my fault. So it's this really sick sort of um, dysfunctional pattern. Um, and But the difference is the codependent can say, you know what, maybe I have a part here, maybe I need therapy, maybe I need help. You're watching these videos, that probably means you're probably a codependent. And you're like, I'm gonna get some help, I'm gonna do some work on myself, I'm gonna get well. Unfortunately, the narcissist very rarely ever comes to that because they don't go to therapy, they rarely ever go to 12-step recovery. They just don't do any of the work needed to heal because they think they're perfect, they don't think there's anything wrong with lying, cheating, gaslighting, stealing, financially abusing, um, manipulating, you know, having very low or, or no empathy for their partner, having a secret sex life, porn addiction, sex addiction, alcohol, drug addiction. They don't think there's anything wrong with this. So. Why would they ever get help? Because they must be perfect. Remember, they are wearing a mask. Their mask is a good guy, good girl mask. It's a mask of perfection. Underneath it is incredible duplicity, a lack of integrity, and they're very, very dishonest and self-centered. Everything is about them. They don't really care how it affects you, the stepchildren, the children, the affair partner's children, the affair partner's ex, if there is one, the colleagues, the friends, the family, they don't care. They just don't care, right? So you can get some help of course they can too if they would ever like lay down their pride but they usually don't but you can you can get some help you can do some healing i highly recommend those books also a very very good course is on dr rhonda freeman's website she is a um a neuropsychologist she has an excellent course um, on how to heal from sociopathic abuse and narcissistic abuse. And it's really um, a lot of sort of neuro-linguistic reprogramming. You're reprogramming your brain. You're healing your brain that is totally traumatized. You probably have complex PTSD. Most of the people that are coming out of these relationships do or some you know level of trauma. And her courses can really help you to understand what's happening in your brain uh, bottom, you know, top, um, sorry, bottom down, top up processing. It will help you to re, 
um, align and reprogram your brain. And of course, meditation is huge. I already mentioned that, but I really, really think that getting into a regular meditation practice, um, if you if it's really hard for you, start doing yoga and, and meditate while you're in savasana you know, right after the, the yoga, or you can do running. Running is a med, you know, that can be a moving meditation. Sometimes I go running and I listen to guided meditations while I'm running. Cause for me, I have a lot of very high energy. So I need to get like, um, I need physically to be sort of exhausted in order for me to really quiet my mind. Um, so I don't know if that's helpful for you or not. Um, there's a app called 10% Happier. It's, it costs a little bit of money, but it's excellent. It teaches you how to meditate. It's, it has a lot of um, mindfulness and awareness. There's another app called Calm. And then there's, of course, free ones on YouTube. So just know this is not your fault. You are not responsible for the abuse that you endured. What you are responsible for is for your healing. So begin that healing journey. Start doing the work. Start getting well and really shift the focus off the narcissist, shift the focus back onto you and heal because there are so many different um, modalities that you can work with to heal. For me, I believe in a higher power. Um, I pray and I meditate and that really gets me into touch with my true self and with the God of my understanding. So um, I hope that this is helpful and I hope I sort of covered some of the things that you can do to start healing from these dysfunctional, toxic, relationships. I hope you have a really good day. Bye-bye.